Hi there, I'm Stacy, the encaustic mixed media artist behind Studio Stacy. Encaustic literally means to burn in. So I paint with beeswax and a torch and because it's mixed media, pretty much anything else I can get my hands on. If you're new around here, welcome. If you're a returning viewer, welcome back. Consider subscribing and joining this artsy community. Don't forget to hit that thumbs up button, which helps me get introduced to more like-minded artsy folks like yourself. Good morning. Um, a few days ago, I prepped another big panel with um, some encaustic gesso. So let's rewind the clock here, go back to that. Just a quick little blurb of me um, gessoing this panel and I had to do a little bit of rearranging in the studio. Okay, I have one last thing I wanna get done here in the studio and that is to prep another big panel. Um, it has gotten a bit cloudy out and we're predicting high winds and rain tonight and into tomorrow. Um, so I'm hoping to get this done before that happens, but first I have to move this big painting off of the work table and get a big panel down from up in the loft. So I think I'm gonna probably just put this big painting onto the freezer here in the studio for the time being. It's not the most convenient spot, but it gets it off of um, this area so that then I could get the other panel and put it onto that area, if that makes at all sense. And of course it has to be the panel on the bottom, but um, I now have it in place, so I'm going to prep it I decided rather than bore you with prepping the panel, I would um, show you how this silicone mat is working out. I have to clean it so I moved the panel onto the floor briefly. So it's now it's all cleared off. So I'm going to clean it off from the uh, previous wax and I thought I would show you and tell you kind of how it's working out. Okay, so you can see this wax is pretty sealed in here. But if you just kind of get under it, it pops right off. So um, that's really nice. It's not like sticking to it badly. And I'm sure I can use something other than my fingernails, but it does just pop right off. Okay, here's my thoughts on this silicone mat. I think it's gonna work out really nicely. I think things like um, paint, and maybe some inks, I'm not really sure because I haven't used inks on here yet, could possibly stick to it more than the wax does. It's also a little staticky because it's like a, it's a thicker silicone. So, you know, dust and things like that. Definitely need to use some water on it just to wipe it off. Or I'm thinking one of those, you know, tiny little electric sweepers would work nicely on it but I am really happy with it. I would highly recommend it. Also, um, this gray catalyst, um, it's not one of those rubber ones, it's a plastic one, so it's a little stiffer. It is, uh, let's see, C81 catalyst, C81. I will, um, if I can find a link for that, I'll also link that below along with the silicone mats, but um, they're great. They're not like the non-stick craft mats, they're thicker than that and they're bigger. So that's why I was really looking forward to trying them out and using them because they cover this huge space for me. Like I said earlier, they're um, not the least expensive option out there, but I think they're gonna work really well and they're nice and durable. So there you go. Final thoughts on the silicone mats. And I'm pretty sure I showed this in the past, but just thought I would show you again um, in case you're new around here or as a little reminder as far as how I don't waste any paint really. And so my drip tray has gotten pretty full and I've emptied it once already and melted it down into a tin. And so I'm going to pour that paint into a silicone mold and let that, you know, cure up and dry. And then it usually makes like a grayish, purplish, sometimes a brown color. Um, just depending. Sometimes they're nice colors, sometimes they're so-so colors, but I always use them for um, different backgrounds, things like that. They're nice little 
neutral kind of color. So um, I just thought I would show you that process. Hopefully you can hear me over that. That is the rain on the roof. I didn't quite beat the rain. It's coming down fairly hard. So I think I'm going to take and mix up some white encaustic paint before I try to take a mad dash to the barn. So I'm gonna mask up, put gloves on. I poured some encaustic medium into my white paint tin already and I'm gonna add just a bit of white pigment and stir that up and yeah, then I'll be pretty much ready to go for this next large painting. I have to probably do one more coat of gesso on it, but other than that, I think it'll be ready to go. I also am running a little low on the encaustic medium in the griddle, so I added a brick into there. And now I'm definitely, I think I'm all ready to paint this big panel. And over on Instagram, I had my followers over there vote on these two sketches. These were the next two sketches that you guys liked the most out of all of these sketches. And they pretty much were at a tie. So I had my Instagram followers vote on which one. And this one came out on top. So for the next probably a couple weeks or so, I'm going to be painting this sketch, transferring it onto a big panel, much like I did the other one. I'm hoping to do a video from start to finish of this entire painting, but um, we'll just see how it goes and see how long the video gets. So um, hopefully that's what this video is going to be. We're gonna find out. Today my plan is to do a underpainting of this sketch onto this big panel and so I'll probably take you along for that ride. a little bit hard to see because I think this is a little bit blown out next to myself but um, I have the sketch done and now I'm just gonna go over I did it with Neocolor crayons um, one of my favorite things to do under paintings with and now I'm just gonna go over it with a bunch of water maybe add in a few more details and then um, I'll probably let that dry and it might be ready for some encaustic medium soon quick change of plans I decided to add some hands in to this painting hand veins um, I have no idea if they're really gonna come through in the final painting but sorry about the shadow it's really kind of sunny out and the skylights are letting a lot of light in today not a bad thing anyways now I think I'm ready to put some water down on this I would explain the reason why I use and love these Neocolor crayons and they're actually called Neocolor 2 water soluble crayons I believe is the technical name for them at any rate they activate with water and then act kind of a little bit like watercolor paints do and then once it's dry they're permanent so when you brush over it with encaustic medium you're not brushing them around again or reactivating them so that's really nice nice quality art material to work with encaustic and i also wanted to point out that when you're rubbing them around on the surface that you have encaustic gesso on the encaustic gesso is not completely waterproof. So they do react a bit to the encaustic gesso and they become a little bit more opaque, a little bit pastel-like, but they're still beautiful and wonderful to work with. Now, if you were, were to just work with them on a panel that it doesn't have encaustic gesso on it or a watercolor, then you won't get that pastel effect. So either way, I love them, highly recommend them. Hope you try them out if you haven't. 
Okay, I'm gonna let that dry for a while. Um, there's some really wet areas and the more I keep working it, the wetter it's gonna get and the more it'll take time to dry. So I'm just gonna leave it. It's a really rough, rough sketch, really rough underpainting. But um, I've got some layers down or a layer down, I guess. And um, I think next will be time for wax. I think I'm, I'm good with the underpainting. I keep looking down because it's right there. And sorry, that's my phone going off too, but Anyways, I'm going to let this dry. I'm going to go grab some lunch and hopefully pick it back up in about an hour or so when it's dry. All right, this underpainting is now dry and I should have turned the wax on earlier, but I didn't. So I'm going to turn it on now and then I still have this griddle over here that needs cleaned off from the previous large painting. So I think while the wax is heating up, I'll probably clean that off. Hopefully it doesn't take too long for the wax to heat up because I would really love to get a couple layers done on this um, panel. And it is supposed to storm and rain here. So hopefully, <laughs> fingers crossed, we also don't lose power because that tends to happen around here pretty frequently. Anyways, let me get the wax turned on so we can get going on that. I think I've mentioned this in the past, but I use this rubber catalyst to clean off the griddles and it's like really soft rubber material um, just to scrape all of the paint, excess paint away into the drip trays and it works really nice. It's a Catalyst W06. If I remember, I will link it down below so you can check it out if you're interested in something like this, but it works great to clean off the griddles with. And also I use it to scrape off the excess paint out of the brushes as well. So kind of works for both things. I also need to shift a few things around while the wax is heating up. So I'm going to do that now too. Um, I think I mentioned this before, but I'm working on a couple different, perhaps new camera angle setups. I don't know. Um, we have dug out an old camera <laughs> out of our storage unit and I am actually currently charging the battery. So fingers crossed, maybe that will work. It's a nice big camera, but um, with a bunch of interchangeable lenses and you know, all the fancy stuff, but at any rate, not important. Charging those batteries, um, it's older, so we're gonna find out probably, hopefully in this video a little bit later on if that's gonna work or not work. But for now, I'm just gonna shuffle a few things around, get the big painting closer to the clear wax medium that I got heated up, and um, yeah, we'll go from there. All right, wax is melted, and I've also switched out to the big torch, and we're ready to start painting. A couple quick tips when painting large and how to get a smooth first layer. First off, the big torch and heat up your panel to a nice warm temperature. That will help the wax glide on and the big torch is really helpful for heating up larger areas. And then you really want to load up your encaustic brush and I'm using a bigger encaustic brush here but you wanna really load it up with encaustic medium before you slide it across your warm panel. The other thing is if you work in sections, that really does help to keep everything nice and warm and not cool off. Okay, I think that this is good with the encaustic medium. I have, I think about 10 layers, maybe eight, I can't remember, <laughs> stop counting. Um, of encaustic medium on here. Everything is nice and smooth and a glass-like. And even though this painting is probably going to be full of texture, I know I've said this before, I like to start with like a really smooth finish and I like to put down several layers of encaustic medium. I just find personally that I never know if I'm going to be adding um, texture in certain areas and I'd rather have it smooth than try to have to smooth it out later. And I personally feel that the encaustic medium helps the encaustic paint go down. So that's why I put so many layers on it. Also, if I ever decide to embed anything into it, helps um, if there's extra layers to embed like, <clears throat> excuse me, tissue paper or, you know, things like that into it. But at any rate, I think this is done. Um, this is a time consuming process and I don't tend to video a lot of it because 
it's not really exciting. You're not seeing a bunch of paint go down. You're not seeing the painting really come together. But it's been about two hours and I am now done with this process. Um, I spent some time scraping back a few areas, especially on the edges. They tend to build up a little extra wax. So um, anyways, I'm going to leave you here and um, I'll probably pick you back up tomorrow to actually start putting some color and paint down on this. Future me coming at you here. And I have decided, which you could probably tell <laughs> by the title of this video, to break this video up into, I think, three parts. And there's a couple of reasons for that. First reason, as I was editing this video, it was kind of getting longer and longer and longer. And um, I still have a lot to paint on this painting, and I don't want the video to get too long. Second reason is I don't want to feel pressure to have to get this painting done in a certain amount of time. It's a big painting and um, I want to be able to take my time with it and make sure it comes out just how I want it to come out. So uh, no deadline as far as having to get it painted in time to get a video out. That's the second reason. And the third and final reason is I thought I could explain each kind of process and step a little bit more without the video again getting too long, but this way um, I could get maybe more into the details of things, maybe why I'm doing something rather than just doing a bunch of time lapses just to get a um, the quick video out and to not have the video be too long. So hopefully you will find um, the process enjoyable as um, I kind of take my time going through stuff and in turn explain stuff hopefully better to all of you. So having said all that, this is where I'm going to end this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, you know what to do. Give it a thumbs up. It truly, truly does help me out. If you're not subscribed, consider subscribing. Part two will hopefully be coming at you next week. As always, thank you so very, very, very much for watching. If you have any questions, leave them down below in the comments. I would love to hear them. We'll talk to you soon. Bye for now.